Hi, Trader Tina here from shortmeetina.com with a recap. Uh, for those that have not tuned in for the last two months or so, I uh, do understand at one point I was doing these videos every single day. It, doesn't, it didn't seem as though it was a good use of my time. Uh, while the videos tend to be about 10 to 15 minutes in length, sometimes it's a little bit more, it actually takes a lot longer to put them together because, you know, there's the editing, the uploading, etc. So although the videos that you watch tend to be out about 15 to 20 minutes, oftentimes I can take upwards of two to three hours to kind of like cut, edit, and upload. So didn't find it to be a great use of my two to three hours every single day. And so I kind of scaled back and said I could do them at least once a week, a few times um, a month, at least about, you know, four or five times per month, three to four at minimum. Um, anyway, the last one I did, I think, came in around July 8th, this July 20th. So here we go with a video, not to mention I had a few folks reach out to me uh, requesting a video. So we're going to kick it off with the SPY. S&P 500, it's a daily chart you know. If you know me, you know that I always like to look at the overall markets because directionally it tells me how I should position myself in my portfolio. Uh, so today, in my opinion, it was a good day. Market, uh, granted, it's only up 0.81% on the day. We closed at 324.32, but I'll tell you why I like today's close. Just a bit of a recap. Again, it's a daily chart. Uh, it's going back to December of 2018, but we can just focus in on price action after we had this breakout and the subsequent collapse, like that 40% move that we saw back in uh, February, March, or April because of COVID, right? 2018 to 2020, it was nice, it was a nice uptrend, a nice upride. Any, anyone that was long for the last uh, year or so, you were able to make some gains. Then February hit, and then the market literally crashed about 40% in a month and a half time. Since then, we've uh, rallied. I know there's a lot of folks still on the sideline. Believe me, I did not catch the bottom here. But I ensured that, in my opinion, when it looked like the market was not going to retest the lows, and I thought it was, right? So when I realized around here the market wasn't going to retest the low, I just jumped on and I'm riding this bag wa uh, bandwagon. So, disclaimer, I am long the... S&P 500 anyway, from the bottom here of 218.26 uh, to where we find ourselves around 324, understand, right? Understand, no joke, from towards the ending of March till now, April, about uh, a little shy of four months, the SPY is actually up north of 50%. I think it's about 48.59% to be exact. So market has definitely rallied. I know there's a lot of folks waiting for it to turn over. And can it turn over? Absolutely. There's always the possibility that we might revisit something like this in the future. But to why I like this close, sometimes it is um, important or useful to look at the close, right? Sometimes I do the candlesticks. Sometimes I just pay attention to the close. And in looking at the close, right, we notice, right, daily chart again, we notice that the market has not closed at these levels. We have to go all the way back to February of 2020 to see that the SPY or when the SPY last closed over that 323 mark. So if we can stay above 324 without a doubt, in my mind, I think we have a really good chance of retesting all-time highs, which comes in at around uh, 337. So right now, I am a bull. Again, still assessing, still watching. Markets are very dynamic. But right now, I like it here at 324. I like that close or that uh, price point above 323. What else? All right, so let's uh, touch base on Tesla. We closed at around a little over 1600 up about north of 10% on the day. Uh, I've been saying that Tesla, in my opinion, can get to 2000 I'm no longer in Tesla. I let go of my shares last week around around here, around that 1600 mark. Why? I mean, the stock, in, obviously, you can see it here. It's run up a lot uh, since March of 2020. I mean, just a few months ago, the stock was trading... Uh, as low as around uh, 350, and last week we got a little shy of 1800, uh, 1794, 99 to be exact. And so when with this red candle here, I said, you know what? Let me ring the cash register. I'm looking to get back in. Believe it or not, will I be able to actually get in and 
at a relatively safe entry point. I don't know, but I'm paying attention. It might just run away from me and that's okay. In my opinion, you always have, you not whatever that I just said, you always have second, third, and fourth opportunities to get into a trade, right? Even when it runs away, you're always gonna have that pullback. So not, you know, if you find yourself like, losing or not consistent or not in profit i'd say if you want to you got you can do what you want i would say to just you know scale back and just have things unfold naturally you don't necessarily need to chase anyway i still like tesla i still see it at 2000 although i rang the cash the cash register uh last week i'm looking to get in uh depending on how it opens up tomorrow depending on how it trades this week I might actually jump in. So keep your eye out on Tesla. Again, I see 2000 on the horizon. What else? All right, Spotify, another big winner. I know that these are the stocks that I generally tend to talk about a lot, but I talk about them a lot because I, you know, I still believe in them, believe in them and for the most part, I am still long. I do have two newcomers that you haven't heard about, so stick around to the end and I'll talk about two new stocks that I think it's right at that cusp ready to explode. Anyway, Spotify again up 10% on the day. I have been very vocal about that 300 price target. I've been vocal about it since the stock was trading in the low 100s. I love these types of charts in my opinion. They're relatively easy to trade if you are patient, right? Uh, so this chart is daily. It goes back to 2018. You have your consolidation. We broke out back in May. We consolidated for about a month or so. We broke out, then we consolidated. And based on this candle here today, it looks like we're breaking out. I would not be surprised unless the market like totally collapses. I can see 300 this week. Again, based on trading activity. And even if we don't get to 300 this week, I think it, it's, it's um, I want to say stair step, but it's uh, it's trading in my opinion very beautifully. It's not running away. Granted, it's up a lot uh, from March of 2020. It's almost doubled in that time, if not tripled. But even so, it is still, in my opinion, uh, doing it in a very methodical and safe way. So again, based on this green candle, looks like we're breaking out again. Uh, look out, 300 might be on the horizon. What else do we have? All right, so work again. Similar to Spotify, it has not gotten going the way Spotify has, but still very hopeful. It's trading well, although, you know, it's kind of fluctuating between that 30 price point to let's say that 34, 35 price point. Uh, granted, it's kind of stuck in that range, but I think that that's actually good because you know once it gets to that 35, 36 level and that represents the floor, in my opinion, that would be sort of that breakout price point. So here, right, uh, you see it's in, it's in within this range here. We broke out back in May of 2020, right, about two months ago, and we've been consolidating since last week. I thought that was the breakout there. We went as high as 320, uh, 36.23, but like I said with the SPY, sometimes it's really important and helpful to pay attention to the close, because if you look at the close here, uh, you'll realize although we broke out last week, we didn't clo close above that crucial point. What's that crucial point? Uh, so for me, that would be around uh, 35. So at any point, if you see work close above 35, in my opinion, it's gearing up to run. So keep your eyes on work. I still see this as a $40, $40 stock at minimum. I think it can go more, again, based on trading, but let's put $40 as the minimum. Still bullish and still long. What else? All right, and then we have Disney. Again, I don't venture out too much. I tend to trade like the same two handful of patterns. I've been studying them for about 20 years. Um, you know, if they work, they work. If I understand them, no need in trying anything fancy. Uh, so Disney, kind of a newcomer, kind of not. I was very vocal about Disney all last year. I thought that it had the potential to go to two hundred dollars um and it was on its way right uh last year um late last year went as high as 150 and obviously like most stocks heading into 2020 early 2020 we had that massive pullback disney was no exception it went from 120 to a low of around uh 
75 to $85, somewhere around here. Uh, we've trended up since, and again, we're at a crucial point. This is highlighted because for me, this is sort of the anomaly. Uh, this trading activity here is outside of this range or this box. Uh, and so for me, if we can get back above this box, right, or this red line, let's call that resistance. Let's give it a number. Let's uh, put it at 120. If we can get above 120 and close there, uh, I think Disney can make another run to uh, 150 and beyond. So sitting here at 117, you you know, it's it's still a stock, in my opinion, you can get in and make some money. And I am long Disney for disclaimer purposes. What else? Okay, and then there's Casper. I know that this one sounds a bit strange. It's a lower price security, but similar to the others, I like the way that it's trading or I like the pattern that is emerging. Now, it might take a bit of time to get going and I'm okay with that. Some folks like to jump into stocks when it's exploding and running. I kind of like to get into stocks when they're relatively dormant, uh, when I believe at some point, uh, within the near future, they're going to explode. And I kind of see that similar sort of cosmetic and makeup with Casper, ticker CSPR. Uh, by the way, this is a daily chart. Goes back to when the stock IPO'd about a year and a half ago. So it's a lower price security, right? The SPY was trading in the 300. Tesla is trading in around 1600. Spotify, uh, it's in 200. Work a little, uh, you know, less comparative to the others that's trading in the 30s uh disney another hundred dollar stock casper just sits here at 777 uh, we're off on the day about one percent it's a lower price security uh but i definitely think if momentum uh favors the market that this one can actually pick up and potentially even double and a double gets it at 14 dollars, which is still lower price Hence why I think it can go to 21, potentially even 30. Again, we're not there yet. I don't like to get ahead of myself. Right now, we're sitting here at 777. Take a look at Casper. Again, I like the setup. I think I can see this stock uh, doubling if momentum shifts uh, in the market's way, right? Uh, so yeah, that's the new one. I think I might do one more. Let me see if I can find a penny stock for you. All right, so I found a winner, uh, TNXP, TNXP, yeah, there you go. So this is the hourly chart. It was actually up huge on the day, not sure where I was, but up 91% on the day. If you look at after hours, it's up an additional 9%. So while you, while you see um, a quote here of 154, it's actually trading around 169 in after hours. Um, you know, in just a few short trading days ago, the stock was trading around uh, 60 cents, 50 cents. So huge winner it seems that it seems as though it's been on a tear for the past uh few trading days and uh it might not stop right you might be looking at a two dollar stock perhaps even a three dollar stop stock i don't think it's out of the question that the stock can potentially double from here and trade it around three dollars uh but for that to happen obviously a lot of things one of the things that i would be paying attention for that to happen i said obviously a lot of things okay uh but what i'd be paying attention to um is the high of 186 and side note you know i realize if i don't do these videos um every single day um it's very hard to have like a flow when i finally do them but nonetheless carrying on uh so i'd be paying attention to today's high of 186 uh we potentially can take that out if we can take that out heading into trading tomorrow i think that bodes bodes well for anyone that's a bull uh, and if we can get into that $2 range, I'm pretty sure we can do $3 tomorrow. But I think the key is, is to get to 186, uh, which is today's high, and trade above that. So if you're long on the sidelines, wondering where this is going to go, pay attention to 186. Again, if we can trade above there and hold that, have that serve as the low or the floor, uh, I think $3 is around the corner. And that's my take. And so I'm going to cap it there. Tina here shortmeetina.com. If you enjoyed any portion of that video, just do three things for me. Like the video and then comment in the comment section. Again, it helps uh, It helps to get the video out to anyone that's searching for SPY, Tesla, SPOT, etc. the stocks that I talked about today. That's the first thing. Uh, two, subscribe to our YouTube channel at Short Me Tina. 
Um, we're growing. I'm pretty sure we're going to get to 2,000 at some point this year. That's the second thing. And the last thing, I'm actually still hosting that free 14-day trading course. It's completely free. I don't need your credit card. Just an email address so I can know where to send the lessons to. Uh, it's things that I've learned trading the stock market for close to uh, 20 years. Very sort of basic things, but uh, I feel like if you're starting out or you're not consistent, knowing these things can kind of like set you up uh, to get on the right track. And don't get discouraged. Believe you me, I've been in the stock market for a very long time. I thought about giving up so many times, but if you hang in, hang in there, I guarantee you, trust me, it gets easy. And then you look back and you say, well, why did I ever lose to begin with? Why wasn't I ever making money? Like it, it kind of gets easy in that respect. You know what I mean? So. Hang, hang in there. Uh, if you want that free 14-day uh, uh, trading course, then do me a favor. Head on over to shortmeetina.com. Sign up. Become a member. Thank you for listening. And as always, thank you for the support. Uh, take it easy. Uh, stay safe and I'll talk to you soon.